Would Alexandra Sasha Trusova have been the Olympic medalist in the 2022 Beijing Games had she stayed with Plushenko at the Angels of Plushenko? Honestly, no. Honestly, I think if Sasha had stayed with Plushenko, she likely would not have even made the Olympic team. And that's not speaking about Anna's, uh, Sasha's talent or Plushenko's talent as a coach. This is basically because the Russian Skating Federation had made it very, very clear that the only girls that were going to make it to the Olympics were going to be the skaters of Iteri Tuberetsi. The narrative had been very clear from the very beginning. Um, Tuberetsi is this wonder coach. She has these wonder skaters that the rest of the world cannot beat. The rest of the world is jealous of Russian's talent. And Iteri is the greatest coach of all time. And she's going to bring three of the greatest skaters of all time to the Olympic. And she's going to sweep. And the question wasn't which three skaters she was going to bring. The question was Iteri is such a great coach that her and her team could bring any three skaters and they will dominate and we will have a Russian Olympic sweep. And I'm saying this as somebody who fully 100% expected Iteri to have her sweep. There was no way I did not see three Russians on that Olympic podium. I honestly bought into that narrative that we were going to have not only a Russian sweep, but an Iteri were Russian sweep. As much as I love the Empress Elizabeth to Tamisheva, I already knew months ago there was no way she was going to make it. The same way I knew that Sasha had to come back to Iteri for her to make it. Because if we remember when Sasha was with Plashenko, they started working on those in-between skills. The very same things that cost her the gold at this Olympic. They started working on her transition so that it's more than just crossover, crossover, jump. Her performance was becoming a little more. Her musicality was becoming a little more. And had the Russian Federation decided to let her keep her E30 bonus while she was improving, that would have motivated her to stay with Plashenko and keep growing. And had they given her a fair chance, then she could have made the Olympic team while at Angels of Plashenko. But as we saw, all the while Trusova was improving little by little, her footwork was improving, her spins were being held a little longer, she was listening to her music more, her jumps had more transition into it, her score was going down. Her Iteri bonus got taken away and she was being penalized for things that she never got penalized for when she was with Tuberetsi. Her jumps were being called for the first time in her entire career. And then the minute she went back to Tuberetsi, those same judges that were calling her jumps all suddenly became blind and could not see those calls and she was not getting it. It, it was a very clear narrative. The only way to make it onto the Olympic team as a woman, as a ladies figure skater in Russia was to be under Iteri Tuberetsi. And I felt like that was such a great disadvantage to Russian skating as a whole. By putting that one camp, by putting that one coach above skating itself, the Federation ate itself inside out. There were so many great Russian skaters that fled to other federations, and those federations are now building up their lady skating based off of the skaters that they were able to get from Russia. Georgia with Gabanova is starting to build up their program. Poland with Ikatieva, they're starting to build up their program. This is all losses that Russia is now going to be feeling from years to come because they made it in an environment that only Iteri Tuberetsi skaters has a chance at meddling. Only Iteri Tuberetsi skaters have a chance of leaving Russia. Only Iteri Tuberetsi skaters have a chance of going to Worlds, going to the Grand Prix, going to the Olympic. And so these skaters have no choice but to find other federation where they will have international exposure. And I'm not just blaming the Russian Federation for this situation. The ISU, who we all know is as dirty as 
any federation can be. The International Skating Federation is probably one of the dirtiest federations out there. Literally allowed their code, allowed their judges to not call any of the Russian under rotation, to not call their pre-rotation. If a spin was traveling from here to Istanbul, no one saw it and it got positive. If the double axles were being crammed out and legs had to be extended to keep it stable, no one saw it. No one called it. So it, it's it's in part the Russian Federation that made it impossible for Chusova to be with any other coach but Iteri Tuberetsi. And then it was Okay, it was approved by the dirty, disgusting underbelly of the ISU and the judges. Because I honestly believe, had the scores not been inflated, had the scores been fair, had the, the Federation, had the Russian Federation said, you know what? It's not just the 32 but I see we have here. We have um Davidoff, we have the snow bunnies or snow leopards, whatever they're called. We have Plashenko's angels. Let's create a level playing field for all of these coaches and let's just let the skaters do the skating. Then I feel like the Russian ladies feel would have been so much richer. Instead of just having Iteri at the board and having the, the meltdown. And it was three meltdown. I don't care what anybody says. Yes, you can point at Chusova because she was the one that was most outwardly, outwardly in pain. But there were three skaters under Iteri Tuberesi having a nervous breakdown, screaming out in pain. Valieva was having her own pain. And please don't try to tell me Anna was not having her own pain. That child looked shell-shocked. She looked like she had nothing left. We would not have had that. We would have had one Iteri skaters, maybe one Plushenko skater, and one other coach skater. And we would not have seen what we just saw on international television. I would personally have loved for Alexandra Sasha Trusova to have stayed with Plushenko to have continued her growth when she was working with Ilenik, where they were working on, you know, the spins. They were working on the footwork for her to have grown as a complete skater. But I understand I understood why her parents, why Sasha decided to make the decision that she did, which was to go back to Iteri Tuberesi. And the reason why was because the Federation, the Russian Skating Federation, made it amply clear. We do not care about skating as a whole. We are pushing this narrative of Iteri Tuberesi as the greatest Russian coach that ever lived. And she can take any skaters and turn them into Olympic champion. And that's why I feel like had Sasha not gone back to Iteri, I doubt she would have even made the Olympics. Not that, you know, it was a great Olympic for her, despite winning a silver, silver medal. I feel like the damage that was done to her is so great that that silver medal just... It, it, it's just a piece of metal at the end of the day compared to the psychological, physical, and emotional damage that kid went through. And I feel like she could have been spared all of that had the Russian Federation been a little more open-minded and not set on the Iteri Tuberetsi narrative. So unfortunately, no, I do not think Alexandra would have been the 2022 Olympic gold medalist in ladies figure skating had she stayed with the angels of Plushenko. I think the chances are she probably would not have gone to the Olympics because the judges would have put like one of the other Iteri Tuberetsi girls ahead of her. They probably would have figured out a way to get the scores for Maya Kromik or they would have, excuse my French, juiced up Maya Kromik to get her to do a certain number of, of, of quads to get the job done. But either way, no, I don't think Sasha... Alexandra realistically had a had a chance. Um, so that's what I think. But you guys let me know. What do you think? Do you think she would have won it if she was with Plashenko? Leave me a comment.